Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Government to increase assistance to the most vulnerable in society. The pending introduction of village tourism and the resulting benefits are highly anticipated. The intense drama of the new world comes to you via NTN. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. The government of St. Lucia has reiterated its commitments to the most vulnerable in the society with an increase in assistance. The Home Caregivers Program, for example, will see an expansion this fiscal year. Here's Chanel Norville with the details. Reducing poverty in St. Lucia remains high on the government's priority list. According to Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment and Parliamentary Representative for Grosley, Honorable Leonard Montout, the government has introduced a number of programs and initiatives aimed at achieving this reduction. Highlighting some of the programs, including the Public Assistance Program and the Safety Net Program, the minister revealed that changes in the country's family dynamics have made other programs necessary. One such program is the Home Caregivers Program. As a result of a drop in birth rates, St. Lucia has also witnessed a decline in the country's average household. And as a result of this confluence of factors, there has been an increase in demand for elderly care services in St. Lucia particularly among the poor and vulnerable population who are unable to afford care from the various private homes available in St. Lucia. In addition, there have been increased concerns about abuse of the elderly. Now, Mr. Speaker, again, I take a pause here to mention the fact that I've lamented, in fact, expressed concern about the drop in our population. I think it is about time as a nation we begin to take stock of that development and take measures, put measures in place to reverse it. Here, you heard of an example of, <laughs> I'm suggesting that we have more children. Data from the Central Statistical Office indicated that elderly persons 70 years and older increased by approximately 9.7 percent from 9,949 in 2011 to 10,910 in 2018. Providing some insight into the program, Honorable Montout explained that the services are provided based on need and merit. In response to, the growing to this growing epidemic, and that's what I call it, Mr. Speaker, the government through the St. Lucia Social Development Fund in April 2017 launched the Home Care Program, a program which provides specialized care to the elderly and disabled persons at no cost to the client who otherwise are unable to care for themselves. Care is provided to beneficiaries from Monday to Friday from 8 to 4 p.m. During the year in review, Mr. Speaker, a total budget of $6.49 million was allocated for the home care program. And this program has a total of 408 caregivers that were employed in 2018 and 2017. Sorry, sorry, in 2018. And 17 supervisors provide services to a total of 635 elderly and disabled persons across St. Lucia. The minister expressed concern about the bureau situation, adding that he expects sooner than later a national discussion to find solutions. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Plans for the introduction of village tourism has been lauded in the St. Lucia Senate, with members anticipating the benefits to the people. More from Lisa Joseph. As the key economic pillar for future growth in St. Lucia, considerable attention has been paid to the tourism strategy. Some 20 game changers have been developed to accelerate growth in both tourist arrivals and tourist receipts. The aim is to increase stay over visitors from 386,000 in 2017 to 541,000 by 2022. The Honorable Prime Minister during his budget presentation revealed that whether it is in adventure tourism, ecotourism, heritage tourism, or wellness tourism, the country must evolve its product beyond the package-based offerings now reasonably well covered in its market. Part of the new approach is formal agreement with sharing economy providers like Airbnb. During the debate on the Appropriation Bill 2019-2020, Independent Senator Mauricia Thomas Francis expressed support for the move which she says empowers St. Lucians to elevate their standard of living. You will not begin to appreciate where the tourists stay on this island. Any tourists who tell me they are living in Greece, 
and they're calling some names Gayaboa. I've never been to Gayaboa. I cannot tell you where Gayaboa is. But when they describe the area, they are living in all places. Because guess what? When we're talking about empowerment, we have St. Lucians who have actually empowered themselves by investing in their properties to offer a service to a niche that was untapped for so long. And this is village tourism at work, Madam President. Madam President, the benefits of village tourism is huge. It is huge. Why is it huge? The impact is wider. Village tourism will allow interested persons to become participants in the value chain of tourism and improve their social outcomes. This, Prime Minister Chastney says, is an example of empowering St. Lucians and has the potential to revolutionize wealth creation in previously marginalized segments of society. Independent Senator Adrian Auger agrees. The non-traditional accommodation sector, um, also referred to as Airbnb, I think could be a driving wave of investment, construction, training, standards improvement, linkages and diversification. For the average solution interested in participation in the tourism sector, and in particular ownership in the tourism sector, this is quite possibly the first time that there is this prospect that you could actually participate meaningfully at a scale which is appropriate to your income and your wealth and be part of this tourism industry of which we speak so fondly. The key economic targets of the tourism sector strategy are to increase GDP contributions to $1.9 billion by 2022, attract investments of $3.5 billion by 2022, and create over 4,000 jobs by 2022. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness confirms the departure of the cruise ship, which contained a confirmed case of measles. The ship departed on the night of May 2, 2019, for its home port in the Dutch Caribbean. Dr. Meline Fredericks James is the Chief Medical Officer. Prior to its departure, our International Health Regulations focal point, who is also our acting national epidemiologist, had direct contact with her counterpart in the Dutch Caribbean, and we shared details, full details, of our public health interventions, our epidemiological investigations, and, and, and any treatments which we provided to the crew and passengers whilst they were in our port. We'd like to remind persons that it was necessary not to allow anyone from the ship to disembark because of the highly infectious nature of measles. Measles is a contagious disease which is spread by droplet infection through coughing, sneezing, etc. It can spread directly from person to person and the, the droplets, the virus can also survive on surfaces for a short while after someone coughs or sneezes. The fact that there was a confirmed case of measles on board meant that other persons though they may not have been showing signs of infection, were exposed and could possibly later develop symptoms of the disease. The chief medical officer thanked partner agencies, namely the ship's agents, tourism agencies, the St. Lucia ANC Ports Authority, including Ports Police, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, including the Marine Unit, and other government agencies and the media for their support and cooperation during the intervention. We are also, or we continue to monitor our own persons because whilst the ship was here, it was necessary for some of our persons to go on board to examine and investigate the situation and provide any other care which was necessary. So as per public health um, guidance, we continue to monitor our own persons. Anybody, any of our staff who were on board have received the measles vaccine and we continue to monitor them closely to ensure that no signs or symptoms develop. We do not believe that there was any high risk to those who went on board because the necessary precautions were taken in some cases, but we do follow, have to follow them as a matter of procedure. We'd like to remind everyone that measles is a vaccine-preventable disease. And that was the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Merlene Fredericks-James.
St. Lucians will have an opportunity to experience and appreciate the creativity, talent and culture of the Republic of China, Taiwan on the small screen with an airing of a new drama series on the national television network, NTN. More from Anisia Antoine. The Republic of China, Taiwan and the government of St. Lucia have signed a licensing agreement to air a Taiwanese drama series on the national television network. The New World drama series consists of 24 episodes and will be featured every Friday. The series is centered around a local newspaper editor who is in search of her long-lost childhood friends. The ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Douglas Shen, explained that the plot is thick with the themes of love, friendship and suspense. I would like to encourage our St. Lucia friend to get a closer look at the culture of Taiwan and the talents of the cast uh, in this uh, great TV drama series. I believe, as I mentioned, the culture will bring our heart together, yeah. okay, despite the thousand miles of distance between mm -hmm. our two countries. Mm -hmm. St. Lucia and the Republic of China, Taiwan re-established diplomatic relations in 2007. Mm -hmm. Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with responsibility for culture and creative industries, mm -hmm. Senator the Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, mm -hmm believes that the series will further strengthen the bond between St. Lucia and the Republic of China, Taiwan. We welcome, you know, this series, um, The New World um, from Taiwan. Um, it's always important for our countries to continue the relationship um, that we've had. We've benefited significantly in all spheres of the world, uh, you know, all spheres, um, whether it be economic, social, um, we've been able to, um, educational, we've been able to benefit from the people of Taiwan. And so this opportunity will be seen through this television series, will even bring us closer. You understand, um, our people closer, uh, ours as well as the Taiwanese people closer to St. Lucia. Um, I think for us as a government, we are indeed heartened um, by this gesture. And we will continue to be forever grateful for the support that we've gotten from you. The New World Drama Series will premiere on Friday, May 10th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Anzwan reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to your update on the NTN Nightly News on happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Director of Youth Mary Wilfred has characterized the annual Youth Awards as a forum to inspire young St. Lucians and make the nation as a whole aware of the talent that exists among the nation's youth. Ms. Wilfred made the observation at the start of last weekend's National Youth Awards. Tonight's event is a demonstration of the uh, confidence that we have in our young people in St. Lucia, that we can boldly recognize them and celebrate their achievements and their accompli uh, and accomplishments. And I must tell you, we are not there as yet. Um, this is a work in progress. There's much more to be done. We believe that there are many other young people who are out there that are not recognized as yet. And part of our uh, plan is to ensure that every corner in St. Lucia um, is taken into recognition. Um, I am happy that, you know, even at our awards, 
we do feature young people living with disabilities because they are doing uh, wonderful, thing, wonderful things as well. And I'm sure there are many other young people with um, disabilities who are talented and who are contributing to their family, to their school and to their uh, communities. Ms. Wilfred also reviewed the evolution of youth development in St. Lucia and the contribution made by the National Youth Council, NYC. I believe in the early 80s, um, youth development, um, a lot of the emphasis on youth development came from the National Youth Council, and that was in advocacy, that was in lobbying government and institutions for um, certain uh, things or policies that the councils um, deemed necessary for um, young people. Somewhere along the line, the government of St. Lucia included um, youth as a portfolio adjoined to culture. Um, it was with education and human resource development. It was with community development. The Ministry of Youth has been one of the uh, departments that has, um, that has been bounced around for many years. And so it, it never really had a home per se. Um, but now I believe the, uh, the emphasis with, with young people uh, throughout the world and also in St. Lucia, we have a huge um, demography and we believe that there has to be a ministry that has to see about the affairs uh, of young people. Ms. Wilfred said the awards was a gesture that can become even bigger in the future with the assistance of young people. Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, is confident the Appropriations Bill 2019-2020 will assist in alleviating the problem of unemployment among the nation's youth. Senator Isaac made the comments on Tuesday during her opening statement as the Senate debated the Appropriations Bill 2019-2020. Can you imagine, Madam President, that within three years, unemployment has decreased to 20.2%? And for us as a government, it is still not at an acceptable level because youth unemployment is still too high. We need to be able to continue creating jobs for our young people. Given the good performance from our last budget, Madam President, we expect that this budget our third budget will make a more meaningful difference in further reducing on unemployment. So when the young people sitting in the gallery there leave, leave um, school, they will have meaningful jobs to get into. And this is what my government is about. And it is our government, it is all of us that this government serves. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, as part of its continued programming for Independence 40, will be staging a family sports fun day at the Via for Molly Purpose Courts on May 19th, 2019. These events are being staged in collaboration with national sporting associations. Only persons born before 1979 will be able to participate, although younger persons will be included as far as officiating is concerned. Veteran teams have already been organized to participate in court events, namely volleyball, basketball, and netball. Ministry officials promise it will be an exciting family day filled with entertainment. And that's how we end our segment this week on happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Every year, the 3rd of May is the date to celebrate the fundamental principles of press freedom, evaluate press freedom around the world, and pay tribute to journalists who have lost their lives in the exercise of their profession. World Press Freedom Day was proclaimed by the UN General Assembly in 1993, following a recommendation adopted at the 26th session of UNESCO's General Conference in 1991. This year's theme is Media and Democracy, journalism and elections in times of disinformation. Antonio Guterres is the Secretary General of the United Nations. A free press is essential for peace, justice, sustainable development and human rights. 
No democracy is complete without access to transparent and reliable information. It is the cornerstone for building fair and impartial institutions, holding leaders accountable and speaking truth to power. And this is especially true during election seasons, the focus of this year's World Press Freedom Day. Facts, not falsehoods, should guide people as they choose their representatives. Yet, while technology has transformed the ways in which we receive and share information, sometimes it is used to mislead public opinion or to fuel violence and hatred. World Press Freedom Day this year focuses on the critical role of the media in keeping the public informed and leaders accountable by providing transparent, reliable information. This day also reminds us of the dangers journalists confront in fulfilling their function. Civic space has been shrinking worldwide at an alarming rate. And with anti-media rhetoric on the rise, so too are violence and harassment against journalists, including women. I am deeply troubled by the growing number of attacks and the culture of impunity. According to UNESCO, almost 100 journalists were killed in 2018. Hundreds are imprisoned. And when media workers are targeted, societies as a whole pay a price. On World Press Freedom Day, I call on all to defend the rights of journalists whose efforts help us to build a better world for all. And that was Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. When persons with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur, Madame, département qui n'est pas responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale PIA NTN, Capozoto, Nouvelle Acquéole, Président Primus Hutchinson. Cette ci a trouvé l'occasion pour comprendre plus concernant la culture et la vie en pays Taïwan. Ça a fait par un programme télévision à façon de soap opera. Alors, même manière, cette ci a gardé Young and the Restless avec les autres. Kaya Pwesa Sawe Yo Protection Hot Taiwan à So NTN qui a suivi même principe là. Vendredi bon matin, ambassade de Taiwan, Douglas T. Chen, et délégation, à ce moment ministre de la Culture, Honorable Fortuna Belrose, et chef GIS de Vinali, et l'autre travail, t'a semblé un champ de conférence département pour te voir un témoignage de ce moment là. Dans le programme de télévision, à Koyol, c'est la terre nouveau. Et qu'en anglais, The New World. Ambassade Chen, ni espoir que le programme de la Kaye a renforcé la relation avec ceci et puis Taïwan encore plus fort. Et qu'il a placé cette ceci à la meilleure position pour apprendre la culture et la vie de Taïwan. Ministre de la Culture, on a eu Fortuna Belrose, qui a cru que le programme de la Kaye a les jeunes qui ont déjà engagé des productions de films pour entrer encore plus fort. Lani Zensha said, Lisi, qui a commencé à faire ça aux œuvres. Um, just um, l'année passée, mois passé, nous tenions un, 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 un groupe Zensha said, Lisi, qui allait à um, London pour continuer à faire un film. Il a commencé ici, okay. um, with the Rinrush Generation. Oh, okay. um, and so, nous ni Shen Moon, qui, qui est aussi, nous ni Shai Moon, qui est aussi à Dan, fait un um, film, movies. Um, documentaries, um, exactly what happened actually. Um, we just need to continue by your support for you to be able to you know, at the time. But we don't like you. I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to Programme Télévision Hot Taiwan, qui a joué tous les vendredis au soir, commencé vendredi prochain à 8h. À ce NTN, et qui a montré l'histoire 
de l'amour, crime, beaux amis, en parmi l'autre action. C'est aussi, j'ai pris une démarche pour faire assurer qui viennent des animaux pour trouver affectés par ces qualités maladies qui ont fait affecter même qualité ces animaux à l'autre pays. Durant la discussion avec nous en GIS, le ministre de la responsabilité pour l'agriculture, l'honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a déclaré que le gouvernement et le ministère sont très concernés et a établi un pour gouverner ça par conséquence des industries touristes et le pays à même. Selon l'honorable Joseph, comme l'industrie touristique là, a développé plus en plus, c'est le signe pour faire assurer que la production vienne par une qualité chimique qui est pays international qui a servi à les viennes. Le ministre agricole là, dit qu'il est plein qui est le signe en situation. Ça, là. Nous ne pouvons pas problème ça en cette ici pour parler à bord. Et puis, moi, je voulais dire que je suis content, at least, nous avons mis des policiers en place, et puis, nous ne pouvons pas comprendre ça, nous ne pouvons pas apprécier ça. Dans le lait, nous ne pouvons pas quitter. Um, vient de sortir de son meilleur pays en tuer cette ici nous avons fait pour une raison. Now, quand nous venons au gouvernement, nous avons été nécessaire pour, pour venir même au AI. Et puis nous sommes um, 182 pays à la terre qui ont venu même organisation ça. Organisation ça, c'est lui qui est responsable pour assister les pays pour make sure that you panic ces trois cas qui ont affecté la production, um, manger, production pour nourrir les animaux. Et puis, le gouvernement nous a été nécessaire pour nous faire des marches, nous a été nécessaire pour nous faire des directions. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie l'invitation. Je ne sais pas encore si vous avez la vie, vous avez trouvé l'autre. Nouvelle à Koyol. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine avec mon collègue Joël Namé Nichel. Merci, on Pill Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair and breezy, becoming cloudy at times with a few scattered showers. An Atlantic high pressure system will generate moderate to brisk easterly winds and above normal seas around the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low-level clouds moving with the wind flow will bring a few scattered showers over the islands during the forecast period. Tides for Castries Harbour, high at 3.22 p.m., low at 8.22 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, high at 4.29 p.m., low at 10.03 p.m. Seas, locally rough with waves 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.40 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Sanusha Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.